Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Buxton United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. Uh, let's take a look at first thing at our morning announcements, starting with celebrations. Any birthdays? Sandy's got one this week. Oh, Sandy has one this week. <laughs> and Henry has one. For like one day or something, and she's older, isn't that how it works? No, so. He's older. <laughs>
himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. And the second reading is from 1 John chapter 4 and verses 7 through 21. And God is first. God is love. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is so, also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. May God add understanding to these readings of Scripture. And now we'll hear from the choir.
of Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. <coughs> the word of God for the people of God. <coughs> and our next hymn is Thy Word, number 601, in the hymnal, or up on the screen. <coughs> This was his lucky 
dead, he thought. So he got out his ID and he went over to the limousine driver and they saw it was the right name, so in he went. And he was enjoying many creature comforts, more than he could imagine. There were snacks, there were beverages of all kinds. He couldn't believe it. He'd never been treated like this before. Meanwhile, back at the curb at LaGuardia, <laughs> the wealthier man stood when he up pulled a regular sedan with a sign with his name on it. Mm -hmm. He thought to himself, you'd think the Waldorf could do a bit better than this. But he got in and he was off to his hotel. You'd think they could at least provide a snack and a bottle of water, he thought, as he looked around and there was nothing there for him. Jeez Louise, he thought to himself, the Waldorf must be getting rather stingy. Well, it wasn't until both men reached their hotels that they realized there had been a mistake made. You see, both men shared the same name. Neither had known that their flight had two men with the same exact name on it. And of course, the drivers would not have known that either. So when each man saw his name, he just jumped right into the car. We have something that's similar in our text today. You see, there are two men with the same name. Two Philips in the New Testament. There's the disciple and the apostle Philip. He's the better known Philip. And then there's the Philip of today's story. This Philip was just an ordinary guy. And that's why I love this story so much. He was like a deacon of the church. He volunteered to do the work of looking after widows. But the church realized that he also had the spiritual gift of evangelism. So, at this point in time, Philip was answering a call to go now to the people of Samaria to tell them the good news. And an angel of the Lord gave Philip a message that he needed to head south. Obediently, Philip set up. Before long, he saw no ordinary cart being pulled by a donkey. He realized right away that this chariot belonged to the queen of Ethiopia, and that this man in it was the eunuch that attended to her, the queen of Ethiopia herself. Now, I want us to stop and think for just one minute. Let's think about a modern monarchy that we might be more familiar with. Let's imagine that we are walking the streets of Windsor in England, and along comes a gold Cinderella-type carriage. Now, who do you think that belongs to? Well, it used to belong to Queen Elizabeth, right? But since her passing, it might have King Charles and Queen Camilla in it. Or maybe it's carrying the Prince and Princess of Wales. How might we feel if that happened to us? Any answers? Excited. Okay, you'd be excited. I believe that, and Lynn would walk right up to them. This <laughs> sermon is not for Lynn today. <laughs> How about anybody else if you saw that? Cody. Yeah. I believe Cody. I feel a little nervous over that. I feel like, ooh. I'm a little outranked here. For me, it would be very daunting. I wouldn't know what to say. Or I wouldn't even know what to say to a worker from royalty, never mind your royalty itself. I probably wouldn't feel as if I should say anything, because I'm just, after all, a commoner. And here, for me, is the most beautiful part of the story. You see, Philip is a lot like Lynn. Philip recognizes that this is a royal chariot. He knows that important people are riding in it, but he isn't daunted at all by that. In fact, we're told that he runs right up to the chariot. I kind of picture him running alongside it for a while, listening to the man as he reads from the prophet Isaiah. 
Now remember, tradition maintains that this is not the Apostle Philip, but rather Philip the deacon with the spiritual gift of evangelism. He's a lay person, okay? Just like us. The Apostle Philip, we would expect to be bold in preaching, right? Maybe he wouldn't be phased by coming upon a royal chariot, but this man is an everyday person like us. He volunteers within his church. He lends a hand to help out the ladies in the church when they need it. I suspect that keeps him very busy. It's a lot like our men in our church do today. I was visiting with Anne recently, and she was telling me and raving to me about how both Sean and Henry just showed up at her house without being asked shortly after her husband passed away. And, and he cut up, they cut up. And Bill. And Bill was there. She did, you didn't tell me Bill was there, too. <laughs> And away they went and they cleared away a tree that had gotten, you know, had fallen over in the storm. And I was so pleased as your pastor to hear it. I wasn't surprised as your pastor to hear it either. <laughs> That's the church being the church. People lending a hand when it's needed. Well, that's what Philip was like. That's the kind of thing he would volunteer to do. He was a real gem. But he was an ordinary guy like us. Not royalty, not familiar with being around those who work with royalty. None of that mattered to him. Philip simply answered his call. When the call was to help out the widows, he did it gladly. Then when a persecution broke out and he was asked to go evangelize in Samaria, he didn't care that despite the fact that Jews and Samaritans didn't get along, Jesus had done it. If it was good for Jesus, it was good for him too. He simply went. And when he was told to go south and he saw that royal chariot, that too didn't frighten him away. Once again, Philip answered, his call. He helped the eunuch to understand the good news, and he baptized him. No matter what was asked of Philip, it could be a small, simple task, or it could be speaking to very important people with high positions. Philip always answered his call and was obedient to God. He never thought twice about it. He never shied away from anything God asked him to do. When God called, Philip was ready to serve, no matter what capacity it was. And that's the lesson here. Obedience to God. Are we the same way as Philip? Would we say yes to any call of service? I think usually we do. When a meal is needed for someone, there's always plenty to step in and make it. When we have to hold a supper or an event, the workers always show up. What about when the situation is a bit more daunting? If we overheard a discussion between two people about religious matters, would we join in in their conversation? Or would we feel we needed to stay and back off? Well, perhaps we would if the folks were everyday Joes like we are. But what if it was one of our congresswomen, like Susan Collins, let's say? Or what if Tom Brady was in town? Would that be a little more daunting for us? Or would it matter? One of the wonderful things about Christianity is that we have a completely level playing field. It doesn't matter if you own a junkyard or if you push a mop to make your living. You could be a member of the royal family or a world-renowned pianist. You could have a disability. God made the gracious gift of salvation.
information available to every single person on this planet. None of us deserve it. No matter who we are or what we do. But God's amazing grace is available to all people. And amazingly, even more than that, our God wants us to be involved in the process of making growth happen and spreading the good news to others. I think we all should take a lesson from Philip the Deacon, the lesser known Philip. He's only mentioned one more time in the book of Acts. In the 21st chapter, we're told that he continued to use his gift of evangelism by serving in Caesarea Maritima. There was his home, and he had a Christian family that included four unmarried daughters, each with the gift of prophecy. Philip offered hospitality, we're told, to Luke and St. Paul. They stayed in his home for several days. Philip was not concerned with anyone's station in life. He answered always with a resounding yes and shared the good news of Jesus to absolutely anyone, even when it must have been daunting. And our God asks us to do the same. I have a story for you about the late Billy Graham, who was a man very much like Philip. Billy would lead his crusades all over the world. Rich, poor, it didn't matter. He also was pastor to many of our presidents. He preached at the royal, for the royal family even, at both Sandringham and Windsor Castle by invitation of the queen herself. He even held private audiences with her to answer questions and discuss matters of faith. Again, like Philip, even if it was a daunting situation, it didn't matter. He was ready to answer and to answer his call. I want to close with this beautiful verse from St. Peter's first epistle. Peter wrote, In your hearts revere Christ as Lord, and always be prepared to give an answer to everyone the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Peter the Rock knew, and so did Philip the Deacon, an everyday God. We need to be ready to share the good news of Jesus Christ with anyone, anywhere, and any time. And all God's people said, Amen. It's time now to go to the Lord our God in prayer, and I ask you to please remember try to use first names only. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, we come before you today, and we are thankful that you love each and every one of us. We sometimes forget, Lord God, when we see people of different stations and different means, and we forget. And in your eyes, we are all equal. Help us, Lord God, to treat all people as equal as well. We come before you today, and Lord God, we pray for all those who have needs, the needs that we lifted up before the start of the service. We pray for Gracie May, who has her surgery tomorrow to remove her tonsils and we pray for Jean's parents. We give thanks that they are both home now. But Lord, we know they have many needs, and we continue to pray for them, that the services that are currently being denied, that they will be given to them because they need them, and they're entitled to them. We lift up our Sharon, who is sick today, and the family of, the, the pair family, as they recently buried their sweet Betty Jean. We pray, Lord God, for we pray for um, Deb, who will be traveling for work and having a hard week this week. May she have the patience that she needs. We pray with Cody for his Grammy, who is sick, and.
for Anne and her family as they continue to grieve. We pray, Lord God, for Chris, who had bypass surgery and is still recovering, that that recovery will go well. We pray for Evelyn with dementia, and we continue to pray for Patty to recover after her fall. We also lift up, Lord God, the people of West Bowen and UMC who had a very, very scary experience last week. We pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will guide them in making the decisions that they need to make to make their facility more safe. And now, Lord God, we lift up any other concerns and we lay them before you now. All these things, Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We want to thank you for the many ways that you have supported our ministries and with your time, your talent, and your treasure. And we remind you that the offering plates for both regular offering and missionary back. Our final hymn is, As a Fire is Meant for Burning, 2237 in the faith we sing or on the screen. Please stand for it. 